This happened when I was younger. As an adult, it's even more scary. I lived in a town in Wyoming growing up. We lived in the front of the city park, if you can even call it a park that is. There were a lot of people who were drunks, as well as homeless people that lived in the park, so most children didn't go to the park. Me and my brother did often though, as very little scared us, that is, until that night. Now, being a small town, even though living across a somewhat dangerous place, no one locked their doors. My room was the first one as you came into our house. One night I woke up to someone putting their arm around me. I thought it was my mom. Not that she did that, but I was only a kid. I turned over to ask what she wanted, and there was a homeless man who was in my bed and he was staring at me with a blank smile. He then said something to me like, Well, looky here. Isn't this a real treat? Or something like that. It's been so long, I'm not sure exactly what was said. I then screamed and he had said to quiet down since I was in his bed. My dad came into the room and then instantly got angry. Now, he's not a big guy, but he had picked him up and then dragged him right out of the house. The whole time, this guy was screaming that this is his house and that I'm now his wife. I was only about 10 years old at the time. We ended up calling the cops and they came and got him. They told us that it was our own fault for not locking the doors. Needless to say, after that we always had the doors locked regardless if it was day or night. I moved away and into a safer place, but I do still lock my doors to this day. I am even a little OCD about it, and I make sure that I can't even open the door. I am a mother now myself and I can't even imagine something like this happening to my own children. Any names mentioned in this story have been changed for privacy reasons. I want to start off by saying that I'm currently going into my senior year in college at a large university in Pennsylvania. This happened to me a few months ago while I was a junior in my spring semester. The apartment I was living in at the time had become flooded due to a burst pipe in my bathroom, so I was staying at my boyfriend John's house for a couple of weeks until the pipe was fixed. He lived in a house in a neighborhood that was only a 10 minute walk from campus, so it was really easy for me to get to and from my classes. The house was, well, interesting. It was a smaller four bedroom house that sat at the end of a cul-de-sac. A key detail to remember is that the house sat right next to a busy street with a sidewalk, as well as a guardrail separating the backyard of the house and the street. Another key detail is that the house had a creepy unfinished basement with a side door that led into the basement as well as a large crawl space in the back right corner of the room. The only person who went in the basement regularly is one of John's roommates, Owen. Now that I've explained all of the background details, I'll get into the main story. On the third day I'd been staying in the house, I was lying in bed in John's room when I'd got a call from him. When I picked up the phone, before I could even say hello, he then immediately said, Jamie, I'm freaking out right now. I paused and I asked him what was going on, and he then responded by explaining that he was walking on the sidewalk down the busy street that I previously mentioned, when a dirty looking homeless man had approached him. John said the man was just standing in the middle of the sidewalk just staring at it until John went to walk past him and he started talking to him. The man was talking about how handsome John was and that he must get a lot of attention from all the guys at school. John went on to explain that he had a girlfriend and had tried to walk away from the man. However, before letting John go, the man said that he lived only a few blocks away and that he would see him very soon. John then walked away quickly and when he briefly turned around, he saw the man still staring at him with a wide smile on his face. I was freaking out because this had happened literally right next to the backyard of the house, but I figured that the man wouldn't know where John lived. He hung up on the phone and got home a few minutes later, but insisted that nothing would happen and that everything would be okay. However, several weird things happened over the next couple of days. I first saw that some of the food I had bought was missing from both the fridge and pantry. John had asked his roommates if they had taken the food, but both of them insisted that they hadn't. As well as this, I had heard weird noises at night that sounded like slow footsteps walking around the entire house then descending into the basement. 
I just thought it was one of John's roommates sleepwalking and that John didn't seem to hear them, so I just shook it off. Well, about five days later after my boyfriend's phone call was when shit really hit the fan. It was the middle of the day and John and I were laying in his bed watching TV when we had heard a loud scream from the basement. John jumped up and ran towards the basement while I stayed in the room scared as hell. A few seconds went by when I saw John sprint to his room and then yell at me to get out of the house. Owen followed soon after, so I knew whatever happened was serious. We all ran out of the house and then jumped into John's car when he then told me what was going on. So, apparently Owen was in the basement getting tools to work on his motorcycle when he had heard strange noises sounding like chewing coming from the crawl space. He didn't think anything of it until the noises got louder and louder. And when Owen went to look in the crawl space, he didn't see anything at first because it was so dark. So he had shined his flashlight into the crawl space and then immediately screamed. There was a dirty looking man sitting in the far back corner of the crawl space eating a bag of chips. My chips from the kitchen pantry. That's when John went to go check out what happened and Owen screamed at him to get the hell out of the house. John called the police while we all waited in the car with the doors locked. Luckily, the police arrived within five minutes, and Owen immediately directed them to the basement. A few minutes later, the police came out of the house with the man in handcuffs. John then gasped and then said, Oh my god, that's him! I was confused, until I then realized that it was the same creepy man who had spoke to John on the sidewalk only days prior. I will never forget the look on John's face. It was full of pure terror. After the officer put the man in their police car, they took John's statement. That's when we found out how the man was able to get into the house. It turned out that he was homeless and had got into the house from the unlocked side door that led into the basement. He then crawled into the crawl space and set up camp there. When the police searched the crawl space, they found food wrappers, chip bags, bottled Gatorade, and a small blanket that Owen ended up claiming as his. He was the one stealing all of the food from the kitchen and was probably making the strange noises that I was hearing at night. It terrifies me to know that he was living in John's house for who knows how many days until he was caught. John has since moved out of that house, and I returned to my apartment. I never knew what happened to that man after the incident. For all I know, he could be back to roaming on that sidewalk, waiting for another house to break into. The moral of the story is to lock every door in your house, and always keep an eye out for strange individuals. If that man wasn't caught, who knows what he could have done. This took place around 8-9 to nine months ago on the 24th of August, which was a Saturday. School had been going on for about two weeks, so to distress a little, I had decided to see if my friends who I'll call Griffin and Broly wanted to hop on Fortnite. My mom and sister were out shopping. My dad was working and I was bored. It was around 8pm when we finally got on to play because I had decided to make pizza rolls beforehand and ended up burning the batch. After a few rounds, I could tell my friends were getting tired of losing, so they got off after an hour. I was planning on just lying down with my phone and just going to bed. That was until I had heard my two dogs barking outside. It's not unusual for them to bark given how people typically walk on the side of the road, but I still looked anyway just to make sure. I didn't see anybody, but seconds after looking out the window, I heard our garage door open and then shut. That usually means my dad is home from work, but I didn't see his van outside, and he had texted me earlier telling me that it would be working late. I decided to walk downstairs into the dining room and then look out the window to get a better view. From there, I could see that our driveway was empty. There wasn't a person or vehicle in sight. At first, I just thought, oh crap, maybe it's a ghost, because someone had died on our land when it was a gas station before. Apparently, an old man put too much air in his tire and it just popped. I wasn't the type to go investigate, so I ran back to my bedroom and texted my family group chat to ask if anybody was home. I told my mom about the garage door and she told me to turn off the lights, lock my bedroom door, and then just stay there until she got home. So I did just that. About 15 minutes later, I thought that I heard our wooden floor downstairs creaking, like someone was trying to be sneaky. 
I didn't have anything to use as a weapon, so I unclipped my microphone's boom arm from my desk and then quietly opened my door, peeking from underneath. I walked out into our upstairs balcony and looked over, trying to see if I could spot anyone hiding or anything suspicious. I then stupidly yelled, Hey, is anybody there? Like they were really going to answer. I thought everything was fine, until I saw a large silhouette of somebody standing underneath the balcony. I panicked and then ran to the closest room with the door, which happened to be my small bathroom. The intruder must have known that I noticed them because I heard loud and fast footsteps running up our stairs as I locked myself in the bathroom. I had stupidly left my phone in my bedroom, which was right beside the bathroom. After I built up enough courage, I bolted into my bedroom, locking the door as soon as I got in. My sister's room was right across from mine, and its door was open, so I figured the intruder must have been in there. After locking my bedroom door, I grabbed my phone and typed 911 into it. Just before I called, I had noticed that the storage room in my wall was open just a tad. I saw a dark brown eyeball peeking through the crevice, staring right into my soul. The pure terror that I felt in that moment is something that I will never forget. I booked it down the stairs and out of my front door, running up the hill to my neighbor's house. He was a police officer. He alerted the other cops while I stayed with his wife and he went down to investigate. I told him about the intruder hiding in my bedroom. Minutes later, I ran back down the hill to see if the intruder had been caught. When I walked in, I saw a tall, skinny man with a gray beard and a dirty black coat being pushed onto the floor by my neighbor as he was getting handcuffed. I'm not allowed to be home alone anymore, and we have better security around our house now. My family was just happy to know that I wasn't hurt, and they were very thankful for my neighbor's bravery. I don't wish an experience like this on anybody, not even my worst enemy. The story may not be that scary to most, but it certainly scared me at the time. Back in 2016, my sister and I signed a lease for our second apartment together. For some background, we both worked at the same warehouse on the same late night shift, but she worked at the beginning of the week and I worked at the end of the week. Her and her ex-husband had shared custody of their daughter, Sammy, who was with us every other week. On the night of this story, my sister was at work, my mother was visiting for the week, and we were babysitting Sammy and her friend Ashley. Sammy's 8 and her friend Ashley's 9. It was around 9 p.m. Sammy and Ashley were in the living room playing and watching TV. My mom was resting in my sister's room, and I was in the bathroom fixing my hair. All of a sudden, I had heard the log front door open, and my first thought was my sister must have left work early. But that thought quickly left my mind after I noticed two things. One, I didn't hear my sister's keys with all of that annoying jangling. And two, my niece didn't immediately scream mommy. I quickly dropped what I was doing and then ran up the small hallway towards the kids. By the time I got up there, the door was closing and the kids were running up to me, freaking out and yelling. Auntie D, Auntie D. Sammy started yelling. A man just walked in and said sorry, and then he walked out. By this time, my mom had gotten up and was in the living room very confused. I told her to take the kids in my room and then calm them down while I grabbed my phone and called maintenance. My apartment complex only had one maintenance guy, and throughout the year that I've been there, I've called him numerous times, and he has let himself in sometimes when I'm not home in response to a request I've made. As soon as he answered, I asked him if he was in the area and had he just walked into my apartment. He told me that he was at least an hour away from the property and they didn't hire any other maintenance people as of yet. As soon as he said that, my heart dropped. I quickly blurted out that someone just walked into my house and I'm calling the cops now before I hung up on him and told 911. When the police arrived about 10 minutes later, I explained to them what happened, but when they looked at the door, there was no sign of forced entry, so whoever walked into my apartment already had a key. They told me they were going to knock on some doors on the surrounding apartments and then would be right back. Fifteen minutes later, they came back and told me something that really messed with my sense of security. The person that walked into my apartment was a family member of my neighbor in the next building over. I was 24D, and he was 22D, 
and he actually did just accidentally walk into the wrong apartment. Apparently, the people in control of the complex gave every four random apartments the same lock and key set, but the only way the residents would find out is if by chance something like this happened. The maintenance guy came over after the police left and told me that he didn't feel comfortable letting me go to sleep with the same locks. So instead of waiting for the morning, he made a special trip just for me to sleep more comfortably and then changed my locks. I will be forever grateful for him. We moved out of that apartment about a month later and never looked back. Once again, I know this story really wasn't that scary, but I can't stop thinking, what if it was someone who had bad intentions? The first people they would have heard would have been those kids, and I would have never forgiven myself. While this isn't the most terrifying story on the internet, it's 100% true and it did cause me some heart-pounding anxiety-inducing fear at the time that I experienced it. I found out I was pregnant as I wrapped up my first semester in college. My son's father wasn't much further along educationally. We knew it wasn't a good time to become parents, and yet we were naive and ignorant enough to somehow believe we could make it work. Our families were excited. Our son would be the first grandchild on both sides, but neither set of relatives were in a position to help us financially. Grants and our own limited incomes were already paying for our university fees, and yet we managed to score a nice one-bedroom apartment that would allow us to be self-sufficient and raise our son while still finishing our degrees. The problem? Well, the apartment wasn't exactly in the best part of town. Mere blocks away was an area known as the Devil's Triangle. It was infamous for being gang territory, and its zip code had the highest crime rate in the city. We managed to rationalize any fears we had by telling ourselves that we didn't live in the Devil's Triangle, just near it. So it was fine. Plus, the apartment was spacious and well-maintained. The whole complex was great, and the manager was very welcoming and fatherly. We signed a two-year lease and moved in shortly before I gave birth to our six-pound, eight-ounce bouncing baby boy right at Christmas time. Fast forward a few months. By May in Southwest Texas, it's time to start using air conditioning, and air conditioning in a lot of Southwest Texas is swamp cooling. Now, if you don't know what that is, Picture a big metal vented box on your roof that's lined with straw-like pads. Water runs over these pads. Air gets sucked through the water-soaked pads cooling the air, which then gets pumped through the ductwork into your home. It's one way to cool your house. Not the best way, but it's better than nothing. And it works more effectively if you leave your windows cracked just a smidge. This creates a type of vacuum effect that pulls air outside, allowing cool air from ducts to circulate more efficiently through a given room. So it's May, it's late, and we're asleep. The swamp cooler is running. The window is cracked about an inch or two, and my sleeping baby's crib is right next to the window. That's when I hear it. A rustling noise. Metal is brushing against something. It's barely audible, yet it was just loud enough to wake me up. I listen carefully for a few seconds. The sound is familiar, but I can't place it. It's not the baby. He's still sleeping. But the curtain isn't being sucked towards the cracked window anymore. It's like something is blocking it. I sit up to get a better look. That's when I see the outline of a person right outside our window. The same window my soundly sleeping baby is less than a few feet away from. I jostled my sleeping boyfriend and then quietly whispered, Charlie, I think someone's breaking in. He groggily looks at the window, listens to the rustling sound, and then says, It's just the wind. Go back to sleep. That's the moment that I'm able to place the familiar noise. It's someone wiggling the window screen back and forth in an effort to dislodge it. I sit up. My heart is racing. Now I'm panicking. Someone's breaking in. This time I hiss more loudly. Charlie! Wake up! There's someone breaking in! I enunciate each word with as much seriousness as I can. He doesn't even open his eyes. No, no, you're dreaming. Go back to sleep. Now I'm angry. My big, strong, burly protector boyfriend is sawing logs and encouraging me to do the same. 
all while some shadow figure is prying the screen off my barely open window and my sleeping infant is but a scant distance away. I was going to have to handle this myself. I swung my legs around the bed and standing up, quite livid, I march over to the window grasping the pull cord to the mini blinds into my shaking fist. I was enraged but also petrified. I ripped up the blinds and there he was. He had a medium build, a t-shirt, baggy jeans and a ski mask. Which by the way, who the hell wears a ski mask when it's this hot outside? He was holding our screen, gripping it in the middle of its frame, one hand on each side. I screamed, then he screamed, then the baby started screaming. Charlie bolted out of bed and stammered, What's happening? What's going on? The would-be home invader was apparently so shocked that he took off running as fast as he could into the night, taking our window screen with him. My heart was pounding out of my chest, imminent danger averted. I then picked up my son and then pulled him tightly into me. I looked at Charlie and then said, Someone was breaking in. We need to call the police. The police responded within minutes. They took my statement and started canvassing the area. They returned a short while later carrying our screen with them. They had found it a few lots over behind a rock wall. That's when we all had a good laugh at the ridiculousness of a potential thief panic screaming frightened by an array mama bear who almost broke her blinds while she rage opened them, while he then ran away carrying a huge window screen. It really does make for a comical scene even after all these years later. The police assured us that the perpetrator was no longer in the area and they promised to continue patrolling the area for the rest of their shift. After they left, Charlie expressed deep regret over the incident. I wanted to be mad at him, but I just couldn't. We were both severely sleep deprived. We worked full time. We were caring for an infant that woke us up several times a night. And on top of all that, we were always studying for some class or another. It really wasn't his fault. As for the screen thief, he managed to break into several other apartments in our little apartment complex, including the unit directly next to ours, but he was eventually caught after breaking into the wrong apartment. Two buildings over, there lived an ex-marine. Like me, he had caught the guy breaking in. Unlike me, he let him get all the way inside before then pistol whipping him unconscious and then calling the police.